This is the Eye of the Storm podcast for the S&P 500 for Monday, May 9th, 2022. The S&P, along with the NASDAQ and the balance of the markets, continue to follow the Elliott patterns very cleanly at the moment. And that gives me one reason to take a pause and just to review that big picture on down, to review how the situation continues to uh, just be in control and that no, we've not reached a bottom and we're likely not even close, but we will have bounces. And I know for whatever reason may be that actually people want to call a bottom and because everybody wants to get back in and it's like, why aren't you in now? There are so many things to do from both sides. You can trade short, you can trade long, you can build, you can manage. You, there's all things you can do in this market to earn money, both playing it from both sides. So understood, I'm part of it, but no, we're not no, near a bottom. A very short-term close. So in that respect, I continue to just... Uh, go back over on on the daily chart, which is as high as I go and less needed, and I will go further tonight, that our highest level up that is being corrected is the super cycle. The super cycle level. And right there, it is, we just completed along with an intermediate fifth wave, a primary fifth wave, a cycle fifth wave, and a grand, excuse me, and a super cycle wave three. And that then suggests what we are going to be tracking out and tracing out is a super cycle wave four correction. Now, when you follow Elliot, Elliot tells us that this super cycle wave four correction will find its terminus, its ending point towards the terminus of the fourth wave of one lesser degree. That means we've got to go back to intermediate wave four, Inter- excuse me, <laughs> cycle wave four. It was a little slip of the tongue. And so on intermediate wave four came in, in March of 2009, after a very steady, nasty, crazy drop out of the sky. So the S&P was at, at that time, close to its all-time highs and just tumbled and reached 665.75, almost rounding it up one to uh, be an unfavorable number, but it managed to just clean that up. In any case, that is where uh, cycle wave four completed. And that's the support for the super cycle wave four. Now here's the catch. It's going to take 10 to 12 years to get there. And there will be all kinds of trading. There'll be all kinds of reasons. There'll be all kinds of reasons to get both long and short and carry on and everything in between. Don't rush the process because it cannot be rushed. You can see that everything needs to figure itself out, be repriced as the situation ebbs and flows and changes. Right now, we're still in that repricing phase and will remain in this repricing phase as things begin to trickle down. So I'm once again going to start on just, just say, you have to go up to the top of the pecking order, the top of the food chain, as whatever you want to call it. And what sits up there is interest rates. Interest rates from there flows down everything. Interest rates control everything we basically do because either we are borrowing and paying interest rates or we're receiving interest rates. So one way or the other, you know, that is where it's determined and it flows down to everything. And that's what's being adjusted price-wise. There's no doubt that this is what's happening. There's no doubt that it's inflation. There's no doubt that interest rates are going to go up. There's no doubt that the repercussions of doing that are filtering down. And that's the point we kind of have suddenly reached. We've reached within this first major five down on an intermediate degree. We're within the third wave, which is where we start to find larger points of recognition. Their point of recognition, in my mind, 
is telling me that the majority of the market players, the majority of most of people that are involved in the market are now agreeing that, yep, we're going down. Oh, good for you. Yep, we're going down because of inflation. Yep, interest rates are going up. Yep, we do run the risk of falling into recession. Yep, we could get hyperinflation. Yep, we could get all kinds of things. If, 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 if. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, that's all true. But Elliott Wave in its purest form does not pretend to know anything about fundamentals, company-wide, politically, anything. There's none of that. There's no earnings. We react, but there's no earnings within the count that could predict such and such company is going to have great earnings. What we track and what I chart and what Elliot noted is the human emotional responses. That's what's chartable. Fear, greed, happy, upset, nervous, anxious, whatever you want to toss in there, that's what happens. Whatever pushes or triggers you, and you happen to be an investor, guess what? You're contributing to the wave count with whatever you're doing. So that's what we're measuring. That in and of itself is still in flux. And why? Because everybody wants to know if we're coming into a bottom. Because they want to be first in line to buy it. So we could have a rally that may take us back all the way up, all the way back. And it's like, okay, why? Well, maybe it's just going to be short covering. Okay, possible. But I don't think we're going to repeat of last Friday, uh, last Wednesday coming up anytime soon. It's like, if you didn't learn then, you're still out. You haven't gotten back into the market. But in any case, I, I want to make clear that we're not taking into consideration anything but human emotional responses. That's what's chartable. And then that's part of that technicality. We wrap Fibonacci number sequences around it, which also have a tendency to measure the same methodology or the same things that we're doing within Elliott. So we can start to relate different phases to one another, and we can start to put parameters around it. That part's true. Now, what I'm finding is that over the years and over even R.N. Elliott, he wrote about the characteristics slash personalities of wave patterns. And then Robert Prechter took that up along with Hamilton Bolton, and they kind of expounded on it because then they added their years of experience using Elliott Wave. Now, I'm bringing along my years of using Elliott Wave by discussing, it's like, it's not any different. There are a few nuances, a few changes there, here and there, because of everything now being run through algorithmically, but it's still a human pushing the button and they're still pushing it most of the time because of some order coming in. So there is an emotional response to getting it done. Now, <clears throat> so through these changes, I now see characteristically what the market is doing and it fits where the market's at, that I'm looking for that point of recognition that it normally comes within at least the third wave, and then as it breaks down, the third of that third wave is where we see the extension. It breaks into its own larger five-wave structure, and that's what we're happening right now. Now, I'm going to come down off of this. So going back, let me just, I digress. Sorry about that. This particular third wave started, well, let me start from the bottom. The intermediate first wave, um, Intermediate fifth wave began, I believe, in 2021 in the fall. The primary fifth wave began in March of 2020. The cycle fifth wave began in March of 2009. The super cycle wave three began in 1932, but it may have been 42 for the S&P. One or the other. I think it was 42 for the S&P. 1942. So we're looking at 80 years. 80 years in the making. Wars have taken place. 
many things have taken place between then and now. And they're all within this bull market phase on a super cycle degree level. So we're in a super cycle degree fourth wave, a corrective pattern that will likely take us between 10 and 12 years. But those 10 and 12 years are gonna be filled with heavy periods of all kinds of trading, all kinds of opportunities to make money on both sides of that fence called bullish and bearish. If we leave the tags behind and just concentrate on that we're playing the, a corrective phase versus a, a, um, an impulse up or a rally phase, an advance, and so, and the length of time, but there will be rallies, there will be declines, there will be stronger declines, there will be, all of it fits in, but we just have to kind of track it out. We're in a portion of this third wave down that whether it's a C wave or whether it's an intermediate third wave or an intermediate C wave, the structure itself is exactly the same. Without a doubt, the structure itself is exactly the same. So I don't have any reason to assume that we've reached a bottom because we've not come into uh, Fibonacci support levels that I would equate to a bottom, even on a very short-term nature. And none of the givens as to why all of this is occurring, what is creating this readjusting pricing, repricing everything to make it work in today's economy and today's world? And how do we do that? And how does it affect all of us? So it's, it's an interesting time because if you've never been through it, you're going to learn a lot. If you have been through it, well, you've already got some experience and you can kind of figure out what to expect, but just realize the degree in which it's happening. If you remember a while back, I went through and I talked about a beautiful third wave that happened within one of our moves here and how when, I, when we expand that from the degree that I was counting it on to a minor degree to an intermediate degree, you can see that it grows in intensity. Well, we're at that point of recognition within that minor third. So that's a fairly decent size of a move that we should be expecting. And within it, it's all fitting quite cleanly. We've done minute waves one and two. We're in the minute third down. And within that, just a little bit of a, of a um, corrective bounce now should be followed by additional downside. We still, if we, if this is going to complete the uh, four of the small three, and then we get another one down, then we still get a little bit larger four of the larger three, and then another fifth wave down. So putting this all together, the, I am not expecting any upside surprises. Let me start by saying that. An upside surprise to me would be this thing just turns on its own volution and just pops above the, first of all, the four, the daily four at 4,053.54, then above the daily eight at 41.25, the daily 20 at 42.22, at the daily 50 at 43.27, and so on. It not only has to go up and break it, it has to keep going. You want to prove that we're going to do a short squeeze or you've got some valid reason to drive prices up because you want to state that something's oversold because you need it higher, whatever your particular reason is, what's, re what's really behind it? What's really going to drive the market price higher? Getting everybody to believe you, getting everyone to believe that this is what can happen and then have it happen. For what reason? I don't know. That's what happened last Wednesday. It was a short squeeze. Somehow, this line of, oh, my God, they only, rose, they only hiked the rate 50 basis points. What a relief. Like, oh, we got to buy it. Everything, relief rally, relief rally. Boom. The very next day, they took it all back and then some. And then some, folks, because we're still dropping. Now, when we can put that together, it doesn't make any difference to be bullish and bearish. It doesn't make any difference to try to pick a side. What makes the difference is allowing the noise to come in 
when you're trying to determine price action, when you're trying to determine, do we swing and we go higher? Because actually, in all honesty, folks, I really don't care. But if I don't see it necessarily, I'm not going to be expecting it. So if it should happen, trust me, I will trade it. If it could be beyond my expectations, doesn't mean I'm not going to trade it or I will be holding the wrong position. The name of the game is to make money. The name of the game is that the market is always correct. Doesn't mean in terms of perfectly priced at that particular given moment under, the, under whatever was happening. Doesn't mean it has to hold. Doesn't mean that it moves and just keeps going. But at that moment, all of the givens fit and you bought it. So technically it gave signals to go, but it wasn't sustainable. And the very next day, produced a failure, a big failure. Same thing can happen again, absolutely. But it's just like that cartoon where somebody is saying goodbye to somebody, and but they're standing next to a huge trading floor. And then the next person down the line just hears bye. And then somebody says bye, bye, bye. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's a madhouse. That's how the game of telephone works. In any case, I am not expecting any surprises in the market. What would have to happen, it would have to break above all those moving averages and keep on going to produce a surprise. To get itself up to 43, 44, 4,500, can it do it? Sure, sure. They can turn from here and tack on 600 S&P points. And that's how much money will be running around. So in actuality, I don't really care about being right or wrong. As I like, can it do it? Yes. If it does it, I will trade it because there will be more to do than you can count on. So why give it up? I will sit and, and figure it out later because in reality, there's, there's not anything in the realistic world that would suggest we need to turn and just cover our shorts and go long. We need to now stop assuming that there's additional downside and because we're going to go up. There is no reason. There's no, no, there's no fundamental reason. There's no realistic reason. Look up. Look at, the, look at the interest rates. They've gone up three quarters of 1%. Three quarters of 1% trying to combat inflation of 9%, 9.5%. Oh, great. Thanks, Fed. That ought to wrap it up. Let's all go out for a drink. It, it takes longer. This stuff takes longer to happen, longer to do. Now, I'll set down off the soapbox, and I will drop this down to the hourly chart, and let's just take a look at where we are and what I see and what Elliot sees in moving forward. Here is Friday. There during Friday at morning, we went up to 4,153.25. That was the high that needed to be beat as I left it on uh, Thursday afternoon, or actually on Sunday, excuse me, on Sunday yesterday, for the market to do in order for it to be putting the closing touches on a small second wave. If not, I said that, that 4153 would be the completion point for the minute wave two. And that is pretty much what I have done thus far. And because of the nature of the decline, it does not feel a of anything other than it's just a continuation of this third wave. It was down, it was powerful, as much green as there is. The, the, the red, the downside outdid the buy side, but both were tradable. So if this turns into minute two, then we're into a, a minute third wave. And I can add one more layer onto this whole shebang. And that's by taking this to there, to there. 56 now. Let me just go and correct that. I knew it was 55, was it not? Let's call it 55 and see where it shows up. Good. All right. So here 
is now for this minute third wave. And when we look at it, we've already gotten down to 786, so that's good. But the next line is where I would start to start to look for a little bit, may, maybe of a very short-term bottom, because we're just completing a minute third wave. That's at 3917. But the line, the line in the sand for me to really get this done is actually 3770. So here we have again, we're close to this 3728 number. We're going to get down to, but to there because now I've got three more levels and just by tracking the move in progress that are indicating that we're likely going to drop between 3770 to 3728. Then that's done. Then I'm looking that we've completed the minute third. We get a minute four and a minute five to complete the minor third. And that shows up at 33.72. So 37 is what I'm looking for for the minute third. The minor third, I'm looking for 33.72. Then I have a minor four, and then I have a minor five to complete the intermediate three. And I haven't redrawn those fibs yet. So I'm not looking for any surprises to the upside. I'm looking for the strength to remain in the hands of the sellers. I'm looking for more people to be wanting to get out ahead of this rally that may or may not come next week. Because there won't be any news. And so, you know, people get impatient or what, whatever the situation might be. It, technically could happen, but I'm not going to be believing it's a turn. But once again, let me just emphasize, I will not sit in a losing position if the market turns and decides to run. I won't do it. I will trade it. My objective is the same, to make money. I am not here to give it back. In fact, I don't like giving it back. So you trade and you keep trading. That's the other message from today. Even if you made a screw up, even if you took a hit, even if you broke your rule and took a hit that was larger than you thought, i.e. me, there was enough to do to make it all back plus the commission you pay and end up on the plus side. So we like the volatility and I really don't care what side it comes in on. In fact, it's been coming in on both. I'm just not looking for any major moves up before I get a continued downside. Once we reach 3770 into that zone, yeah, then I'll be looking for a little bit stronger, like a hundred or a 200 point fourth wave. That's what I'd be looking for. All right. So continue to trade using the moving averages. The moving averages really do remain in line right now. If we take a look at the hour, uh, daily chart, boom, we see that last week is when the 50, the 20, the eight, the four. That update that we had, that all it did is push the four back up into the eight. That was the big day. The next day, huh, no, nope, wrong, drove it all. All pointing Sharply lower, and for the 50, that's sharply, and the 200 hasn't quite made its turn yet, but I highly suspect it will, which will add fuel to the fire that from that 3770 zone down to 28, this will likely be pointing more hard down. And if it flattens out, it is going to be resistance. And no matter what happens, this begins to be like the line in the sand of like, no way. Unless all problems have been resolved, no way. Okay, so I'm just, just saying. Now, everything being in unison should help for the continued downside into that zone. These other support areas are just that. Their support, look for little bounces. Their support, look, look for something to come to the other side, and then, then we'll go back down. Now, once we do reach that bottom, 
If you're a short-term trader, well, then you're going to want to switch your positions. You're going to switch your strategies. You're going to be looking for things on the long side because we should get a fairly decent bounce. And I'm talking like, you know, 150 points, 150 S&P points. So they're going to happen. When they get started, we'll be able to put Fibonacci around them. All right, I'm going to leave it all right there. Our next update will be on Tuesday, May 10th.